Hey guys. All right, so basically in part one, uh, what we did was we essentially yes. went went through a, a few things. Um, if you haven't watched part one, definitely watch part one. But we basically went over how to do a custom alpha. Uh, we went through some of the brushes and we went through how to navigate on the interface. All right. So this is where we left off with. This is part two of the ZBrush Beginner tutorial. Um, and where we left off, essentially, was that we were working on making a clean mesh that we could sculpt on that wasn't all pixelated, I guess you could say, or, you know, stretched out or anything like that. So, and to emphasize that, I'm just showing you, you know, if I add some, you know, detail on this, if I add some detail, you know, on this, it's going to be... It's going to hold that detail pretty well. Um, it does a pretty good job. You know, it's pretty smooth. You know, can do something like that if we wanted to. So you can see, pre you know, pretty, uh, pretty fast that <laughs> unplanned. Of course, we started creating. Some kind of dinosaur dragon, but you know that's not really what this is about. It's it's really about just learning the brushes and having fun. Um, and again, if I hold down all, I can carve into the surface. Yeah, so we can do some. We can go across too to kind of add like, you know. Like a snout kind of look to him. And uh, right now I'm using the clay buildup brush, which is kind of the brush that we were using pretty much last time when we were, we were doing this. So you can see I can kind of dig in with the clay buildup. You know, and that, that'll kind of get me. A mouth, I guess. There's other brushes you can use. I'll show you some uh, some some brushes that are useful. Um, I believe what we were working with was the clay buildup. There's a pinch brush. So if I hit B, if I hit the letter B on my keyboard and I press P, I can actually jump to that letter of the brush. So I'm going to choose the pinch brush. And the pinch brush, what it does is it actually pinches the geometry. Oops. So. If I go like that, you could see that what I, I'm actually doing is I'm really I'm manipulating the geometry. So you, you want to you could use this, but just be careful. Like make sure it's what you want to do, <laughs> kind of before you you know go ahead and use that brush there. All right. That's pretty much what the pinch brush does, though. It, it pinches different areas. We still have that. We still have 3D Alpha from our last, um, the last time that we were using this. So, you know, and right now I'm just, you know, just messing around. I really didn't, I didn't really, like I said, I didn't really plan on creating anything. But, <laughs> you know, with ZBrush, that just happens, you know. What I'm doing now is I click the rotate and I'm just grabbing this circle here and I'm rotating this so he doesn't look because now it's kind of looking like a head. So mm. I'm just rotating it. Also, you can see that my gizmo here. We'll get to this. We'll get to like more in depth with gizmos, but you can see like, you know, the arrows are pointed like this now. So what you would want to do is unlock it. And then you could do go to mask center. All right. And then go to access. Oops. Actually. Oh, reset orientation. Duh. Reset orientation actually is, see what it does? It, uh, it makes it straight again. So I go like this and I do reset orientation. Makes it straight. Now we lock it again. Once we lock the gizmo, we can move it around. Uh, if it's not, if it's not locked, it just affects the gizmo itself. 
So I can move this around, but nothing happens to this. Okay. I'll control Z to undo that. So make sure this is locked. And then you can move that. All right. It's locked by default, though. You know, so. So now we kind of have a different angle on this guy here, right? So we're kind of looking you know, head on on the uh the object i'll use this move brush i'm going to go down i'm going to hold shift and press d if i hold shift and press d i can go down my subdivision levels if i just press d i go up my subdivision levels so i'll just hold down and press that let's do that real quick oops and um what i could start doing here uh, while i'm at the lowest level is i could start kind of customizing this a little bit with the move brush let's see what i want to get so maybe uh, you know work all your different angles. Don't just work one angle. You know, go up, go down, pull the brow out, make a curve. Um, you know, make the chin. Make sure the mouth is round. Things like that. You know, push inwards. It so adds a, a bit more realism, but it, I mean, it's definitely what you need to do in order to sculpt. You should definitely be doing these things. Uh, so right now I'm making big changes on a lower subdivision level, basically. We didn't really do anything for the back of this guy. I mean, we could probably... Um, you can just pull this. You could. It, it's it's pretty much like digital clay. You can pull it out with the move brush. This is this is going to um, distort this a little bit. So it might not be the best thing to do right now. Uh, I'll smooth it out a little bit. Just want to pull it out just a little bit. But let me see if I go if I press D and I go up. You could see it transferred pretty well. Like it's not. It doesn't look stretched. Um, it looks pretty good. You know, if we go down. Well, there it looks a little stretched, but so we we can get away a little something, and this is because we redid our mesh that we're able to sculpt, um, you know, a little better, make changes a little bit better as well, you know, things like that. So we kind of, you know, give this a little curve. We should probably be doing this at the lower sub level, you know, like curve it up, give it like that S curve. It's all about the S curves. Push this part up, you know. All right, now we're sculpting a dragon. <laughs> okay, so let's not get too carried away here. All right, so let's get back to what we're working on here. All right, so hold on one second. Let me just see. Okay, so we went over the move brush a lot. <laughs> um, we should definitely go over masking. Um, I mean, I showed you guys masking already when we were doing the uh, alphas, um, but I want to kind of touch on masking because masking is very important when you're working uh, with ZBrush. Masking will help you. Uh, masking can give you overlap of skin. It can help you separate mouthpieces, a lot of stuff. So if I hold the control button, you can choose what kind of mask you want to use. I usually use the lasso for the most part. Uh -huh. It's not really working like a lasso now, is it? Ah, actually, we want the lasso here. Uh, now we can use it. You actually just want the lasso here. You don't even need to. You could just use the mask pen and lasso. And that gives you that effect. Mask pen, lasso, while holding control. And you see what I can do here? I can literally select like an area and, you know, I can work on it. So if I hold control, you can even see like my cursor turns yellow. And this means I'm in mask mode. So what I'll do is, I guess I'll just do like an outline on this just to kind of, kind of hit home what it does. Um, also, sometimes you'll notice, like, when you mask, it'll get, like, these areas as well sometimes. So you can just highlight that and then hold Alt 
and it turns white and then just let go. All right, cool. So now we have our mask. Um, I have it where I want it. So now what I'll do is I'll use this clay brush. The clay brush um, is, is another brush that we will use a lot. Um, when you're building things up, it's good to use clay build up to do big. Um, but this one, the clay is good for like, you know, realistic skin. Kind of, it'll give that look. Uh, clay brush fills in areas too. Like if you have gaps, like if I have a big gap, which I can't really do right now, but if, yeah, if I have a big gap like this, the clay brush will fill it in nice. It'll, it'll do a pretty good job of filling that in. Um, so that's some of the things clay brush is good for. I mean, but the clay brush is also good for like, you know, mimicking skin as well. If you use it as a low, a low setting, low Z intensity, like maybe 12 and you kind of just, you can, you know, you can do like zigzag. Zigzag is good to build up the surface, you know, doing like a zigzag kind of thing. Not like this. You don't really want to do it like this. Um, traditional ways kind of to build things up like this zigzag you sculpt in a zigzag i call it the zigzag you can go back over it too if you wanted to afterwards um you can see what the mask did only the mask air the mask area was affected uh the other areas obviously weren't affected by the mask only the unmasked area rather was affected Okay, so that was just a quick example. So something like this, I probably would use. Maybe if I'm trying to give a little extra oomph underneath his eyes, maybe. You know, so maybe we'll just let me just zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. Maybe we'll just kind of go in here with the, and and there's different brushes for the job. Like you might use one brush, but it's just it doesn't work for you. You know what I mean? Like it's just not working. So just experiment with different brushes and, and try to figure out what works for this. This. I think this will kind of work. I'm going to use this uh, with the com combination of the move brush. And then I'm going to I'm going to undo that. And now you could see what I was able to do was I kind of just like carved inwards on his where his eyes are. Uh which looks kind of weird, but it's all good. I mean what I could do is I could even pinch it. Too if I didn't want that. If I want to close that up, I can press B and then P, go to the pinch tool, which we already used earlier, and just kind of pinch that area. Um, you know, maybe I wanted to do something like that. I mean, there's a lot of possibilities. You know, this is kind of like, these are kind of like the ways you would use these kind of brushes. All right, so we can pinch this area. And it's really about, you know, doing stuff and looking at it. Does that work? Does it not work? You know, maybe it doesn't work. You know, if it doesn't work, you know, maybe you want to get rid of it. Um, let me show you the clay brush. So the clay brush really shines on the, those kind of gaps. So now I can go back with the clay brush. And I could just kind of fill in that area a little bit more naturally. See that? Kind of fill it in nicely. Yeah. So, you know, these brushes, they all have their uses. Um, and it's really up to you to kind of experiment to find out what their uses are. But that's the beauty of it. It's fun, you know. I, I, I love the, the clay brush. I really do love the clay brush. I think it's a great, it's a great brush. Um, there's so many brushes, though. It can, like I said, you can really go crazy with things so it's better not to go you know too crazy but try to create something when you're messing with these brushes do try, do try to create something but have fun that's the most important thing if you're not having fun then it's just not for you maybe this is like a little bit too strong i'm going to hold shift and i'm just moving this air out because I kind of didn't like that, but then I kind of didn't want, you know, I didn't want his eyebrows to be so, like, regular. All right, let's go to another brush that we would use. Um, Trim Dynamic is a great brush. Um, it's good for getting planes. Like, you can really cut some nice planes, you know, really give it, like, a stylistic look. You can see it kind of slices things, you know. They go back with a smooth. 
hit that with the smooth and, it, and it's looking really nice. You know? So I'll just go back right here, hit that right there. And I'm kind of going over the shape that I already had, you know, because that's what you do. You kind of, you build on the shapes that you have. You, you can, you can use clay to kind of set things and, and up, like, you know, set it up to prep it. I guess you could say to prep it. Yeah. I think prep it is the word that I'm looking for. So what I just did was I kind of just prepped that area. And then I'm just trying to, you know, going over different, different areas here. And you just mess around, you know, does this work? No, it doesn't work. Control Z. <laughs> you know, it's, there's nothing written in stone. So it's, it's good to experiment. I think right here would work nice if I had something like that and kind of smooth it out. So you could see like, you're getting these plane changes here and plane is like, how do I say like a flat surface? Um, so if you wanted this to be a mech robot, <laughs> you could basically just kind of go over it. Like, uh, you know, I mean, that, that would be like a good starting point. I think something like that, um, depending on what you're working on. But stylistic is good too. Stylistic is just, it, it's like, you know, you don't want to overdo things, you know, it's, um, you put detail in the right places kind of thing. I didn't like what was going on over here. So I'm just kind of just smoothing it out. And you can see this, this brush is good for like cleaning up too, you know, like this area. Maybe I want this to be a little bit more, maybe I want this to be more like his jaw, like his jowl or something, you know? So. There you go. And then it's like all cracked up, you know, you could hit the, hit the, um, hit the edges, hit the edges and give it like a little bevel. A bevel is just that it's just like an edge. Like when you emphasize another edge from a point, from a corner edge kind of thing. So that kind of looks cool. We can kind of run with that. And again, don't forget if you hold all, you could pull out on the surface. Okay. So experiment, I mean, you know, it's good. Oops. You know, it's good to experiment with these things and try to see what works, what doesn't work. It's really, it's really all there is, you know, to it for the most part. It, it's more about experimenting. I mean, you should learn, you know, you have to learn your shapes and stuff too. I don't know. You got to learn some anatomy. Um, definitely. Well, definitely learn anatomy, you know. Like if I was really to do this justice, I would be looking at references of dragons. Oh man, all sorts of stuff, you know. Even things that you might not even expect. You know? Maybe I would even look at a reference of a catfish because you just never know like what kind of element you can bring into your work. You know, you really never know. All right, so that is the trim. This is the trim dynamic brush. Um, that we've been using right now. You can see that we give like that a nice shine. You see how the light catches it? That's what you want. You want the light to catch things. See how that light is catching that? Because there's a plane change. If if there's if there's no plane change, it's just flat. It doesn't catch light. You know, but see that see that's catching that light right there. So that's why you uh, that's why you would use these things. I mean, it'll make it look cool, you know. But it, like again, you just got to experiment. Um, there's another. There's two. There's a trim. This was trim dynamic. But if you press B and you press T, you have something called trim adaptive. Uh, trim adaptive kind of does the same thing, but it's a bit more. It it it, it hits like I would say it hits like a wider range. On the surface, like it, it looks at your surface and it just tries to make it flat. You see what it's doing? It just wants to make areas flat. So if you're like, I know this needs to be flat in the front, you could hit it with that trim, and it'll it'll kind of make it flat. You know, you kind of gotta you redo it a little bit, but yeah, you want this to be flat. There you go. Um, or you can hold all. You know, maybe you want something on top. Or maybe you want something on the sides. Who knows? Whatever you want, you know, you can do it. So 
you can you can get some nice cool cool uh you know happy accidents with this brush too you know it's like just experiment um but yeah th this this brush would be used for those kind of things you know like right here you see how i can just kind of pull out on the surface there all right so that's pretty much what you would use that brush for the next brush is the h polish brush um the H polish brush is great for if you're doing like a Mac or something. Um, it'll, it'll do what I was kind of showing you what the trim adaptive brush was doing. But the thing is that this isn't as destructive on the surface. I think that's the right word. It's not as destructive and it makes some nice transitions um, to make stuff like, you know, metal. So you can kind of go back and forth a couple times. And now it looks like he has like a robotic lower, um, you know, jaw or whatever. So you know what I mean, so let's see what we have before that. All right. This will go back. Yeah, I think we were there. Um, oops. Mm. I don't know how I feel about that. And then you can hit this surface too. So it'll actually make like a surface area kind of flat. So you can really, um, really do some cool stuff. Like if I want to make this flat, I can just hit it with this H polish. And then I can hit the side with the H polish. You know, and you get that kind of effect. And then I can just kind of follow these strokes that I already made and it's going to follow the strokes that you made. It, it's a, it's a pretty awesome brush and it gives you a very nice stylistic effect um, or it can give you the Mac. So if you were using it to make a Mac, if you hold alt, you can kind of just kind of pull up pieces on the surface kind of thing. And then you can kind of cut into that. You know what I mean? Um, go back and forth. You know, maybe you want to blend it in here. Uh, maybe you want to cut this up on the surface. You know, maybe you want to put some cuts in here. Maybe you want to cut here, cut here. Maybe he has like, like what is it, like robotic scales or something. It's uh, it's cool. You know, it's an awesome brush. I mean, there's a lot of cool stuff you can do with it. Um, Definitely brush you should be using, <laughs> needless to say. And pull out pieces. And this brush is good like when you're like concepting out these kind of pieces. Cause and then you go back over it and you clean it up nice. You know, so if I'm just like kind of concepting out, let's say like, you know, a metallic piece or something. You know, I might hit it like this, go over it, and then I would just I would clean it up again with that Z project that I showed you guys in the last on the last episode that we had first episode but you can see it's starting to look kind of robotic now so this brush is super super awesome super useful all right so that's kind of where you would use the h polish brush i mean you could use the h polish on regular things too if you want to hit this side up just to have like a plane change and get that light going there like go ahead i mean these brushes they kind of some of them kind of do the same thing really but some of them doing better than others i would say but you know, the, these are brushes you should have in your arsenal. Um, so the next brush that I want to show you guys is the standard brush. Now, standard brush has been around for a while. This is like the old school brush. If you watch like an old video of ZBrush, you'll probably, you might even find people just using this brush alone. Because, you know, this brush was like originally in uh, ZBrush before all these other brushes were kind of in there. It was really just like the standard brush. And the standard brush does a great job. At pretty much, you know, almost anything. I mean, you know, I just used it just to get this area here going. Maybe, maybe like tuck this in there, you know. So, so I'm using like standard and alt and kind of digging in on the surface here a little bit. Oops, kind of digging in. You 
you know, and maybe we want to, um, maybe want to come back on these, these curves that we made here and go over some of them again, you know, see that now, now, you know, when the light hits it, it looks a little better. Um, oh man, it kind of looks cool. Um, doesn't look as plain as it did. Standard brush is good for that. It's good for everything. <laughs> it's like the one brush. I know I said the other brush is like the one brush to pull them all, but I think the standard brush is too. Um, what else can you do with it? You can see that you can kind of pull, you can kind of give that a little bit of a, um, a lip, I guess. So I can kind of, you know, give this a lip. That just adds like a little bit more, you know. I'm going super slow so I can get this line nice. It's good to take your time, and, and I'm going to show you an easier way to do that. It's actually in one of the menus that we're going to come across in like a little bit. Um, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm kind of giving them like a chin or something, but that's not working, so we'll get rid of that. Oops. If you hold Control Shift Z, you can undo what you just done did. <laughs> um, so yeah, we're we're getting something cool here. Maybe this will be. Maybe this will come some become something else after all. Who knows? Um, let's see. I'm gonna go back to Move Brush, <laughs> and then just I'm gonna go down, hold Shift and press D, and go down. Kind of pull things out, pull things downwards, pull it out, pull it down, push it in, do whatever you want. Give them a little bit bigger nose, maybe. Push it up. So yeah, usually in this in this level, um, like I said, you just use the move brush. Like if you just start, if you just like trying to get some shapes, you want you want to take your time and just. You could really get so many, like, look at different angles of everything on this. And uh, look at every angle. Use reference. Try to get ref If you're using a reference of a dragon, I mean, I know it's not real. Get a lizard. And um, look at it from every angle. And just try to try to nail it. You know, try to, do, try to really nail what you're looking at from all different angles. You can see, like, it's making that shape there. See that? push down so just you know just really look at it just just look at it like this you want to make it 3d so if any area looks flat to you right you want to fix that basically um, if any area looks weird on any angle you want to fix that so it's kind of kind of think of it in that sense and I think that you will uh, it'll start coming to you and start getting it Sorry, there's a train going by. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Um, kind of pull this down to give this more of a, you know, dragonish look. And like I said, I mean, the move brush is just, it's just great, man. You're just forgetting that, getting those angles and... You should you should really be using the move brush when you start. Like if you're not using the move brush when you're starting, you're going to be creating stuff and it's not going to have any form. It's not going to look right. It just ain't going to work. I mean, maybe you'll make something that'll look like something, but it just won't have the same kind of. It won't have all the angles, you know, situated properly. I think that's cool. And if I hit D, I go back up in subdivision levels, and you can see that, you know, if I look at this from all different views, like, we can kind of see, it, like, it's kind of starting to shape out. And we didn't really even plan, like, I didn't plan it, at least. You know, now you can see if I turn on perspective, whoa! You see what I mean? Um, perspective mode can really throw you off. <laughs> but by default, it's at 90. 
that's what the issue with perspective is. So you want to bring it down to like 50. If you want to use perspective, bring it down to like 50. Um, and then you get that 3D look, you know, like it's coming at you. It's kind of cool. All right. So that's that. Uh, I'm just taking the perspective off again for now. Because I usually sculpt without it. Because then there's times like when I'm trying to do something and I didn't have perspective. I had perspective uh, on. I should have had it off when I tried to do a shape, but it's too late. And I don't know. It's always a big thing. But And like I said, in other programs, which I mentioned in the first video, like they have a camera. The camera angle by default and like Max and Maya, it's going to be different than what you're seeing in ZBrush. So if you import this into 3ds Max or Maya or Moto or Blender, it's going to look different. It might, you're probably be like, whoa, this does look, you know, it might come in looking like this and you're like, whoa, this doesn't look like I wanted it to look like, you know, so just be mindful of that really. Um, standard brush is good for kind of, I'm going back to the standard brush again. It's good for kind of pulling out on the surface. You know. I don't know if I'm gonna keep that. I kinda of liked I kinda of like this a little bit. I'll probably tweak it, but again, this is only supposed to be a demo. <laughs> uh what else brush do I use? The damn standard is the Damien standard. Also we should probably save if you're working on a project for a while then it looks semi worthwhile go to tool go to save as for now and i'll just save this one well i want to be thorough so i will save this properly i'm sorry but got to stay organized right oops so i will go to my d drive my 3d and i'll create a new folder we'll just call it uh, ZBrush beginner. Um, you know, you call it whatever you want. And then I'll just save this as Dino and click save. Now you have a version that saved the disk. It says file saved the disk successfully. So you know it's saved. So at least, I mean, there's a quick save too that's enabled. So even if like ZBrush was the crash right now, I have quick save enabled so it'll, it can recover. You can recover and go to a quick save by clicking lightbox or clicking comma and then go into quick save. And you can see I have some stuff in there right now. I'll hit comma to hide that for now. All right, cool. So now what we're going to do, let me try to see what time it is. We'll do this for like another hour and some change. Um, next brush I want to touch on is the Damien Standard brush. and you can also, like I said, we went into this menu and we just clicked this button, and that's how we were able to dock this brush. We can dock the brush here. You know, the whole brush, I wouldn't say the brush, but, you know, all the brush settings that we have available to us, we can dock there. And we can look for Damien Standard. Now, if we don't see the Damien Standard here, it only shows you a set of brushes, right? Right here. So I would just... Um, you know, I, you could actually go through these brushes. Like you can see if I use this slider, I can go up to 146 brushes here. All right. But I'm kind of shooting in the dark, you know, I don't know what brush is what, you know, it's, so what you want to do is just click B, click D. And there's your Damien standard. All right. So you're going to click Damien standard, um, or the damn standard. Um, there was a person that made this brush. His name was Damien Candarell, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and uh, he made this brush. This brush is more, think of this like your, your butter brush. And I'm going to demonstrate what this brush does. So basically, this brush allows us to cut, to cut into our model. Okay. Um, or it allows us to. If we hold Alt and we use this brush, we can get some cool effects. So, you know, we can get kind of like a um, like a scaly kind of effect or something. Yeah, so we can get some cool effects pretty quick with this brush. Uh, so I would probably 
We can use this to kind of give him better, more of an eyelid. Um, typical uses is for the Damien standard brushes to carve in areas, cut in areas like basically what I'm doing, which I'm kind of doing like crappy job. I kind of like where this was going too, so now I'm like trying to do like a nice job. But you know, you basically could just do something like this. Uh, you can you can go like this with it. You can go like this. This brush is basically used to carve into the surface, or you know, or like I said, or just make some shapes outside of the surface. Whatever you want to do. Um, see that kind of gives it that extra umph. You know, you might want to use it here, maybe, or something. You know, it just adds those lines. So if you're like a 2D drawler and you love your line work, then this brush is what you would love or love to use. You know, you'll you'll really love using this brush. You know. This is good kind of to mark things too. Like if I want to just mark out something that I'm trying to do. Um, you know, maybe I'm like, my ears are going to go here eventually. Let me just kind of put this in here for now so I know later to do the ears. And then I come back later on and I look at that note. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to put ears here. That's right. And then I kind of just you know <laughs> go in there and afterwards and do something like that. Um, you could also use it. As a measure, well, as a loose measurement. I mean, traditional sculpting, they would use, they would, they would do something like this. There'd be a line down the middle. You could press X and then just draw and then hold Shift. Oops, you know what? That's not going to work like that. But let's just say we had a line down the middle. You know, like something like this, and we say, you know, we break things up and we have a grid. You know, we're like, oh, the eyes are going to go here, the nose are going to go here, the mouth is going to go here. So we kind of have like a, we can use this as like a grid as well. Um, so yeah, I mean this this brush is really really handy, really handy brush, you know. And also like when you're sculpting, like if you don't get it right the first time, it's all right, you know. Just put it in there and fix it. You know, fix it. If it doesn't work, just fix it up later on. Whatever you want to do. You can go back and with the Damien um, standard, you can go back over areas you already kind of did, like right here. Already kind of have like a like a like a dip. So maybe I just want to you know kind of go over here and just maybe I want to do something like that and smooth some of these areas out. You know, then you can totally do that. Um. Damien standard works pretty cool with alphas too. I think one of my favorite ones is the spray. Is this one with the spray? So I use the alpha 07 with the spray on it. And well, I kind of, I really, I like this brush. Um, I like, cause it kind of, it gives a nice breakup on the surface. You would probably want, you want to use it like low, low intensity, but. You know, a, dra a dragon is more like that, you know, it's more. I'd do this part at the end, though. I wouldn't really do this. And this would be more like skin, but this would be more like a hard, kind of like a hard shell. You know, we could smooth this part out here. You know, so maybe like only the front had that kind of hard feeling. And if I didn't like it, I could always just smooth it out later. You know. So that's that's another way you can use the Damien standard brush. Okay. So yeah, Damien standard awesome brush. Awesome, awesome. Oops. You know, I still have this alpha, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna take the alpha off and I'll go back to I'll just put it on freehand and oh man, hold on a second. There we go. And then what I'm doing now is I'm, I'm digging into the areas that I already kind of had to, to emphasize them even more. See that? So I kind of just like 
I want them, maybe I want them really deep. Like I really want them to feel like really deep or something. You know, so there we go. Now we have that like a little deeper. So yeah, you can, you can see the uses of this brush here. I'm going to go back maybe a couple. I'll go back to there, I guess. Kind of go around this. Um, Again, if things get too messy, like when you're working, um, you can always Z project again, like we did in the first one. You could do it as many times as you want. So if things are getting like too stretched out, you know, I could just go back and I could make a low version of this. I could duplicate this, make another low version, you know, have the high and everything. I'm not going to do it right now, but I could just, you know, transfer all these details onto my new clean mesh once again. You know, and just keep kind of keep kind of doing that to get what I want. So maybe like you know, just trying to see if we want to do anything else with this brush before we uh, go to the next one here. Um, I don't know. Maybe maybe we'll do one of these spiels. One of these spiels here. There we go. Cool. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. Kind of. All right, so that's that brush. What other brush do we use a lot? You know, I kind of want to, I kind of want to dock these brushes on the bottom. So let's just let's just skip real quick and let let's do that. Um, I'm going to try to do that real quick if it's not too much. So preferences, and we're going to go to custom UI. This allows you to customize your UI. Uh, actually, it's interface. Is it? Give me a second. Actually, it's config. <laughs> Haven't done it in a while. Enable customize. Okay, so it's preferences config, enable customize. And what enable customize allows me to do is it allows me to hold control and alt. Actually, I think it's control. Is it alt? I think it's just alt. Uh, no, it's just hold alt, I think. Nope. I think I got to drag first, hold control and alt. Hold on. I'll figure it out. One second. Um, click the Damien standard brush, hold control and alt, and then pull and drag. Uh, well, I just dragged one of them. Nope, that's not, that's not the right one. It is control and alt, but I need the actual brush. So let's see if I can do that real quick. You know, I don't know why can't do it. If it's too much, I'll, I'll have to look it up and figure it out. Um, I have the brush right here. You know what? It's not letting me do it. I bet you if I do it here. Yeah, you see, I can do it here. Okay, hold on. So, for example, if I hold Control and Alt and I pull this brush palette out, like I can grab this brush and put it there. Um, which oh here it is control alt so I'm gonna hold I'm gonna drag the Damien standard brush here holding control and alt and I'll put it I'll put it right here if you hold control and alt you can pick another brush and these aren't brushes these are actually skin shaders but I'm just gonna kind of move it. actually you know what? I'm gonna get rid of these because I usually don't even have them in there um, but I'm holding control and alt and I'm just I'm just holding that and I'm just kind of Control and Alt to drag to get rid of, but I can literally hold Control and Alt and just kind of drag on there the brushes that I usually use, um, so that it's a little easier to demonstrate. I recommend like any brushes that you use a lot, put them at the bottom here, or if you have 
XMD, which is something different, you can have your brushes on a different screen in a nice organized fashion outside of ZBrush in an application. Um, but that's pretty advanced, very advanced. But at least for now, um, we can at least get some of these brushes out of this chaos and where it counts, which is right here, where it's nice and visible. You could also assign keyboard shortcuts to brushes as well. And I'm trying to remember how to do that. I think it's Control Shift Alt. Or is it Control Alt? Let me see if I can figure it out. We'll figure. I'll. We'll, I'm gonna have another thing just on customizing alone because customizing is. It can take a while. It could take some time. Um. So let me just see if there's any other brushes that we want to add while we have this whole thing open here before we throw in the towel. Um, move elastics, good brush. Oh, there it goes. It's it's coming up at the bottom. Okay. So we'll add the move elastic, and what other brush? We did do. We already did trim dynamic, right? So we can do Alt Control and Alt again. Well, let's click this first, and then where's Trim Dynamics already in here? There it is. Put the Trim Dynamic in there. Uh, if we want it, we can take brushes from the light box. We can use those as well. So there was a cool Form Soft is a good brush. I think it's in here. This is like Form Extra Soft. So. You know, I may double click that and choose that, and then you can see it's right here. Control Alt, drag it in there, let go, and like I said, there's a ton of brushes, so I really recommend like pick out the ones you use a lot. You know, well, we'll do a slice. I'll show you guys how to slice brush. Is this a slice? I oh, know this is a different slice. I don't want to. I don't want to mess with that. Um, let me see. How am I time? Seven fifty four. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Let's get back to let's get back to having fun. Um. Polish. You know, I don't. Oh, polish hard was was one I was using. Oh, you know what? I'm trying to actually drag this out. Double click it first. When it comes up here, Control Alt, and then put it there. You have to do it that way. It won't let you add it otherwise. And, you know, my other computer, I have all this stuff set up already. I just didn't get a chance to really set this up the way I wanted to. Slash is a good brush. Ah, oh, there I go again, trying to grab the whole thing. Um, so, yeah, now we got, we got some brushes. You know. <laughs> so, there you go. So this is the fun of brushes. So many brushes. So many brushes. Displace is another cool one. Ah, oh, this is the displace curve. We don't want to use that. I think there's a regular displace, if I'm not mistaken. Displace. Yeah. You see that? Displace. Very nice. So displace is like... Yeah, you know, that gives you kind of a cool. It really changes things, you know. Like these brushes can really change your model, your sculpt. It's a little bit strong. Let's let's use it a little subtle. See what I mean? That that can really change your, just your whole. Uh, I don't. Know, I can't explain it, but it can just really change with the silhouette. It can really change the way everything's looking. This place is good. It's. It's non destructive for the most part. Um, you can have like jowl bones, and not really, but that is that brush. Blob brush. Blob brush makes blob. <laughs> blob brush would be good, like if you're doing like, I don't know, like, um, bubbly skin or something like that, you know. Oop. 
Oops. I'm getting the whoa. Trim dynamic, yeah. I don't want that. I want the smooth brush. Also, I should probably point that out. What just happened to me? Um well, there's a few things that happened to me. Let me control N because I pressed the wrong button. <laughs> Hit F the frame. F as in Frank the frame. Um yeah, what I wanted to point out is that when I was holding shift, I was getting a different brush than the smooth brush. So in retrospect, you could use this. I mean, we typically use it just to smooth out our models, though. But you could use this as a second quick go-to brush if you hold down shift. And then you choose another brush. Let's say, like, move topological. And now I'm on the blob brush, right? Then if I hold down shift and I don't let go, you know, I can start, you know, using that brush. So, like I said, you could do that, but it's not something that we generally would do. Uh, we need, we do need a smooth. We need to smooth sometimes. Smoothing is just part of the game. Uh, but you smoothing responsibly. Don't smooth too crazy. And uh, uh, there actually is different smooth modes as well. Like there's, there's some smooth modes that's like. It's very non-destructive, and then there's some that's like super destructive. So, you know, it's one of those things you got to kind of. Um, it's one of those things you got to kind of experiment with, just to see what works for you. So right now I'm using that blob brush that I showed you guys, right? And you could also see. You know the other brush I didn't use yet that I wanted to show you guys was the uh, in flat brush. That that was another brush I was trying to get in this custom menu that I did. Um, I think I already got it. Oh no, look, it's still in enable customize. If you get out and enable customize. You can click save UI. You can save it. You know whatever you want. Um, you could do a UI snapshot as well. I think that's what we want. Sorry, that is probably confusing. Actually, UI snapshot just does a snapshot of your UI. Makes sense. It basically does a screenshot of your UI. Not what you want. Um. So yeah, I did this, and you could do you could store configuration, and it'll tell you master configuration file has been saved successfully, and it will be restored every time you start ZBrush. So when we restart ZBrush, we're gonna get this. Oh, by the way, there's double arrows here. So if I double click, I can open and close that. Generally over here we have our materials and stuff. We didn't learn that yet, but and over here we usually put our tools. And honestly, you, you could work in ZBrush any way you want. You don't have to do it that way. Um it's really up to you. It's up to you. You could do whatever you want. So if we hit B um I hit I and go to in flat. We can kind of go back over these areas that we just made. And you can see that they're starting to get a little stretched out. It's okay. So I can kind of just, you know, maybe I want to emphasize some of these areas a little more. We can use in flat to do that. And you, you want to just see how it's catching the light. You want to see if it looks good or not. If it doesn't look good, get rid of it. It looks good. Keep it. <laughs> it's really, uh, it's 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 really that easy, you know. It's not rock. It's not too much rocket science, I guess. Um, just trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. I'm going over these pieces. So what is in flat? It kind of like puffs up the surface, basically. So. Think of like when you blow air in a balloon, you inflate it, right? So that's kind of what this brush does. And if you hold Alt, you can deflate. Uh, that's probably the best way that I think that I can describe the brush, at least to you. Uh, I also use this. I actually use this kind of like cut lines in there, too, sometimes as well, because um, it gives nice effects. It could be subtle. You know, if something is too harsh, I'll smooth it out. You know, if it, if it looks too harsh for me, I'll smooth it out. Now you can see because we set up our menu, our 
custom brushes here. I can choose as a Damien standard brush. And I can start kind of going over the things I made with the blob brush. We already kind of have a template, I guess you can say. We already have a, um, you know, a battle plan on how we're going to make these shapes come out. Uh, I kind of don't, I don't like that one in the middle there. So I'm going to get rid of that. Let me see. Yeah, this is a constant, you know, look at this. Does it look good? Wasn't really feeling any of that. Um, but yeah, so maybe, you know, you would just come in here, you know, hit this up just a little bit. I'm not, instead of just going like this, you could just kind of go like that, go like that, you know, kind of curve. Maybe just hit the bottom, maybe hit the top a little bit. You don't have to hit the whole thing to make it, to give it some off on the surface. You can see what it does. It, it really it brings it out more. So I guess what I'm trying to get at is a combination of different brushes, right? Um, is really what you want to do. You want to be working with a combination of different brushes. And you don't want to just, you generally don't want to just use one thing and just, you know, leave it like that. Like, build on it, work on it, keep working on it, you know. I don't know. Or maybe there's some kind of craziness going on here. You can see the difference, too. Like, I just made my intensity really strong, but you see it? It's kind of getting get pixelated. We're starting to use, we're losing um, resolution. So we can do control D and go up again. We can do control D. We just went up another subdivision level. And now it's a little smoother, you know, when I paint on the surface. Intensity is too high, but it's something you got to mess around with. And, you know, you just look at your geometry underneath, fix it if it needs fixing. Slash brush is the next brush I want to go over. Slash brush is nice. Damage on armor or weapons and stuff like that. You know, you, you know, like when you want to get those marks, like, you know, the sword's all like, it's been through a lot. It's like, bam, bam, bam. You know, it's kind of, you know, maybe this, dra maybe this dragon thing, whatever he is, maybe he's, you know, maybe he's been through a lot. You know? So maybe you want to give him some cuts. Maybe you want to give him three cuts on his eyebrows, trying to while out, you know, like Jay-Z. But it's really up to you what you want to do. Ball is in your court. You can see, like, when you push hard on this slash brush, it has this alpha on it. So it's really meant, it's really meant to... Uh, Really kind of scratch the surface, like bam. You know, like I said, it works really good on metal, on metallic surfaces. So it's really up to you how you use it. You could take this alpha off because you see, like I said, in ZBrush, a lot of alphas they have, or a lot of brushes they have these alphas by default because th this is what the brush is. This is the functionality of the brush, you know. And I mean, it's pretty cool though. You know, you can dissect this and change it to whatever you want. So you can see with this, we can go back into alpha and inverse. I think this might give us what we want. No, maybe not. Um, that's kind of cool. So, I mean, there are so many uses. Maybe we can do it. We can even maybe do a drag wreck. Maybe we can get his his eyes a little. Sure, why not? <laughs> um, so yeah, slash the slash brush is cool. It has different uses. It it cool. Use it. Use it. Use the brush.
I highly recommend you use the slash brush for life. Now, nah, but this is a brush you use like at the end, kind of to give armor damage. Like I said, usually stuff like that. All right, so next brush, let's look at the flatten brush. And oh man, you know I forgot to point out a really important, well, an obvious thing probably, but if you look at the icon, it basically shows you how it affects the surface, which is really helpful for a brush that you haven't used in a while. You're like, how is that going to affect things before I even use it? How's this pinch brush going to affect things? Okay, it pinches the surface, you know. So we're going to go back to the flat brush. The flat brush is good to establish planes. Um, make it, it makes areas flat. It's kind of like the trim dynamic in the other brush that we kind of went over to. And you could use this, I guess. Like if you didn't have, let's just say you didn't have an H polish brush, you could you could probably get away with using this. Um, it it really you know it just tries to make areas flat. I mean more or less. So I didn't really like what was going on the front, so I'm going to probably try to flatten this out a little bit. And I'm just kind of dialing this back because I didn't really like I didn't really like what was going on too much. I thought it was just it was too busy for my liking. So a flatten brush could be could be good for that. Maybe I want this to blend in a little bit, you know. Hit it with the flatten brush right over there, smooth it out. You know, I like that a little better. I think that looks good. Mm -hmm. So that's the flatten brush, and I think it's a great brush. I think that it works really well. It's it's not very destructive. At least to me, it's not. Um, I can kind of just go over this form again here. Oh, I like that. Oh. And you, you know, you can build up, build up or subtract, whatever you want to do. Masking is good for stuff like this. You see, like this area here. If I hold Control and I just, I mask this out. Like, I don't want to. I didn't want to mess that part up. Um, maybe I don't even want to mess this up either. So masking is good to just control this area. Like, I only want to affect this part. I don't want to affect the other parts. And you take the mask off, and everything will still looks pretty clean for the most part. But it doesn't because I hit it with that. I didn't put my mask up enough. You get the idea. I like using this like this and then smoothing it out a little bit. Um, oh, we're messing up our eye. It's all right. We could fix it. We could probably fix that area real quick. Let's see if we can fix that. I'm using a standard brush and I'm now I'm using alt. I'm trying to fix I'm trying to fix that area. Probably need Damien's stand. I usually you know what I usually kind of just mess around until something works for me. You know, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And uh You can see right now it's kind of hacking that eyeball up. All right, not even going to worry about that right now. I'll show you guys something different to fix that in a second when we get to it. It's fine. I mean, for now it looks okay. Um, everything looks pretty good for now. Oh, kind of like that. <laughs> Sometimes you just take the brush and you just do something like that. You're like whammy, you know, you'll get some cool effect. <laughs> just the way it is. It's so cool, you know. Let's try different things, you know. Does this work? No. Okay. Uh, does this work? 
No? Okay. <laughs> Let's try something different. Does this work? Oh, it does. Okay. <laughs> then we'll keep it. I actually like that now. <laughs> All right. Let's move on a little bit here. We got a lot a lot to cover. Um trying to see if I want to keep this real quick though. I guess. I don't know. Remember we have a history too, so we can go backwards. Before. After. Before. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't like this making decisions. I keep I'll keep it for now. Maybe I'll change it later. I don't know. Um Let's move on here. So yeah, so you, you get the gist of the brushes. Like this is pretty in depth for brushes. Uh, create. Oh man. So this is like a whole different thing. But in the brush, you have something called create insert mesh. And basically, in order to create an insert mesh, you can just click this button, create insert mesh. It's going to say that my current brush is not an insert brush. Um, because it's not, it's a regular brush. So I can click create a new brush, right? And now I have a new brush of this, of this dyno here. So I just created an insert brush. No, you're like, probably what is an insert brush? Um, I'll show you in a practical example of what an insert brush is. This was the old dinosaur we had. I think we came a while, a long way actually with this. We had this, and now we have this without the other thing. Um, let me show you solo actually. So, all right, so we had this, and now we have this. So you can see, like, you get something pretty cool pretty fast. Um, well, after a while, but. All right, so how do we use this brush? All right, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you, I promise. So we have a brush here. It was saying that we can't have subdivision levels in order to use the brush. So this doesn't have any subdivision levels. If I press Control D, now I have subdivision levels. So I'm going to go down. I'm going to click Delete Higher, which would delete all my higher subdivision levels. So now if I use this brush, <laughs> what I can do is I can insert dragons anywhere. The dragon head that I just made, I can just, you know, I can add it anywhere I want. Um, I insert it anywhere I want now. This could become this could come in handy if you you're doing like tentacles. You can make one tentacle and then kind of put it on your model. You know, with an insert brush, and like you know, I want I want tentacles everywhere. And you could just kind of keep just going and going with it. You know, it's it's awesome. It's so awesome. Everybody should use it immediately. Insert mesh brushes, very important. And it's pretty advanced to, um, even though it's so simple to make, it's so powerful, and you could probably you can get some cool happy accidents with this brush. So, in practicality, the way you would use this brush, okay, I'm going to show you a practical way that we can use this brush. And while we're at it, I might as well show you some other things here. Um, if I click append, I can append a new subtool. A subtool is this. It's like the, the thing we're sculpting on, right? So I'm going to append, well, I don't know. I guess I'll append this spear here, right? It was 3D spear. And you can see it right here. It comes up down here. I'm in solo mode, so I don't have to see everything. Because if I'm not in solo mode, I'm going to see like... I'm going to see everything at once. So I'm in solo mode, which iso isolates this. I have this layer selected. Um, you could also press N and you can quick select. If you hold N, you can quick select subtools, which is really awesome. This is a pro tip, by the way. Hold N as a Nancy and click this to uh, select subtools. So I, I want this spear here, right? How do I know I want this spear? Because I know I want it. Um, so what I'm going to do to this spear is I'm going to try to make it look somewhat like a tentacle. 
Um, it's not going to be perfect because that's not what this is about. Uh, this is really just about. This is about. This is more or less about um, using the insert mesh brush. Uh, pinch is good for pinching, getting that point, like a pointy surface, you know. And then you could use that. I wouldn't use H polish, maybe flat. I would, you could use flat, and I guess. I just go around my model and just flatten certain areas. I'm making a big mess of this. But like I said, I'm doing this quick, and it's not going to be perfect. It's not meant to be. And now we'll just add some, oh, we'll just add some quick suction cups. I think I masked off an area or something. I'm using a standard brush, by the way, and then just, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm dragging out with the, well, you know, with the standard brush, and then I'm using Alt to dig in. Dig on in. And let's just add. Dig on in. I have no resolution, so I'm going to hit Control D a couple times. And kind of work with something here. I'm going to go over this a little bit. I'm going to dig on in. Woo, doggy. We going to dig on in. To my people down south, I apologize. Um... All right, I'm going. I'm doing this like real quick, you know. So don't don't judge me on this. This is a demo. I don't hear people saying that I make ugly tentacles. Okay. All right. Not. I'm not going to hear it today. <laughs> All right. Let's just go over these things real quick. I mean, you kind of get the gist of what I'm doing here. I'm making an insert monster part brush. I guess you can say, you know. That's really what we're doing, right? We're just we're making a brush that we can use and insert on our model. And for fun, I'm going to add some other effect to it. Holding Alt and I'm just trying to mess with the surface here. All right. Probably getting a little carried away, which tends to happen in ZBrush. All the time. Story of my life. I kid you not. I kid you not. All right, let's let's just say that. Oh, man. I keep wanting to work. <laughs> I keep wanting to work on this. Let's leave it alone. Let's leave it alone. All right, because we got a lot to cover. Oh man, now it really looks like a, like a. Um, I'm using that form soft brush too, by the way. We're really kind of getting some cool stuff going on here. All right, that looks a little better. <laughs> looks more like tentacles, right? Um, let's just say this is what you know what we wanted to use. So what we would do is we would choose this, right? And we would go back to that brush menu, and we would go to create, and we do it. Create insert mesh brush, and we're going to say a new brush because we want a new brush. Now we have we have this brush in here, and we can go back to well, this this thing that we had earlier. Oops! Oh, there it goes. If if you hold um. What do you call it? Control? Not control. If you, if you just drag on the surface, you're going to notice it kind of gets distorted sometimes. Sometimes you got to change, like, the orientation. you got to change the orientation of the brush. If you're not getting 
what you want. I don't know if it's this or not. Edit brush credit. Oh, that's just who created the brush. The brush orientation. I'll probably have to save for another day because I do not, for the life of me, remember where it is. It could be anywhere in here. It could just be here for all I know, but I don't, I'm not even 100% sure. So we're not even going to really worry about that right now. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to just drag on the surface to try to use this to create stuff. But this is what the insert mesh brush does. It makes an insert insertable mesh of what you are you you know of what you made pretty much. And you can see what it's doing is it's doing it kind of backwards. So you know maybe if I had remade this brush again, we might get it proper. Um, so for example, if it's drawn out like this, what we could try. Let's just do this real quick. What we could try to do. Is we can go back to we can go back to our tentacle that we made, right? And let me see, is the grid on? Let's see if the grid's on. The the floor is on. But let's just flip it, right? So I'll go to rotate and I'm gonna rotate it a hundred whatever, like right there, I guess. Alright. And then I'll just kind of pull it up a little bit, whatever. Now I'm gonna resave this out as an insert mesh brush. So we'll do create insert mesh brush. And we'll just do new. And now we'll go back to our model, which was right here, and try to draw on a surface. Oh my goodness, it's still doing it. <laughs> I'm not even sure why. It's... Yeah, I got to figure that out, <laughs> like immediately. Anywho, so that's something that oh, kind of going on crazy with this. You know, so that's something you could do with it. Let me hit the control N because I, I pressed the wrong button and now it's acting cool. What you could do though, when you when you use the insert mesh brush, you're going to notice that it, it automatically masks off the other areas, and only the new areas are unmasked. Unmasked. Man, I cannot say that word today. So if you if you want, you could actually go to rotate, and you could rotate these um, into place, and then you could move it. You can go click move. You don't even really need to click move, but you can click move, and you see you see what I just did. You can kind of move this. If you press this square here, you could scale it up and down as well. So I could just kind of move it into place, you know. But yeah, that's the insert mesh brush. So you just learn uh you learn something that beginners don't really learn right away or they don't use right away, but they should. Should they use it right away? Probably maybe not, I don't know. If they know how to sculpt, they should they should be using it. It speeds you up. All right, this other stuff in here there's a multi mesh brush from all sub tools. So this, what this will do is this will create a brush from every sub tool, all these ones here that I have here. So how does that work? You might say, um, well, before I do that, let me just do a quick, quick save. So I'll just, I'll just do a control S. All right. And then we'll just, uh, you know what? I don't want to do that. I just want to do a regular save. Let's just do a save as, and then I'll just put a two on this one. I like to save it in iterations. I put stuff in a folder and save it in iterations, so I always have my work for me. Um, in case some, you know, something crash, I can go back to it. So we'll do create insert multi mesh brush, and you can see now I have I could choose all three to use as a brush. Let me demonstrate how that works. So if I was to go here, right, and use this brush, you could see we could still pull out those tentacles, right, like before. But now I have other options. I can actually pull out the dino head, right? 
I can use this. I can even use the thing that we're actually using like right now. So we can get some pretty crazy stuff pretty fast. Um, this is a good way to get like a lot of detail really fast, you know, just random stuff like this. Like that looks pretty complex, but you're, you know, it's just a bunch of shapes. Um, whoa, that looks crazy. Let's just delete. Let's delete that. You can see that we're up to 15 million. So I'm going to delete that. Now we're down to 2 million. <laughs> and that's 2 million, like, you know, for a geometry or whatever. So that's what that brush does. Then there's a nano brush, right? So we can create a nano brush. Um, and we can't like we can't use these brushes on multiple sub tools. So if you want it, if if I want this, if I want the effect to be applied to this, to this model, I'm gonna have to do this. You're gonna have to duplicate your model because you have subdivision levels. You're gonna take your duplicate, right, and you're gonna you can bring it down or whatever. It doesn't matter. And click delete higher. So we have two versions. We have the the good version, and then we have this version. This version is just so we can use this other brush, basically. Um, so right now I'm using that brush. You could see here that it's just it's doing some weird stuff, you know, on the surface. You know, and if I control Z, I can go back again. So maybe, uh, so nano mesh, um, it puts it on like the, how do I say it puts it on like the vertex on the sur it, It's like, it's snapping it to the surface. See how it says insert nano mesh in a poly. Um, so you can, you know, you can insert a, a nano mesh there. Nano mesh is kind of an advanced thing. If you hold, you, you have all your options for your nano mesh right here. So, uh, how can I demonstrate the nano mesh to you guys? Let's just do it real quick. The tiling is how much tiling like the nano mesh will do. I think there was a way to randomize this, if I'm not mistaken, but I really don't even remember. It's been a while. There's a fill mode. And I really don't even remember what that is. Random seed, yeah, I think that's what it is. Nano mesh just allows you to add like a bunch of these on the surface. Let me see. I think I have to be higher in subdivision levels. So let me just divide this one, two, three, and delete lower. And then use the nano mesh. We'll save that for an, we'll save this brush. <laughs> we'll save nano mesh for a future chapter. I have to I mean there's so much in ZBrush though, and this is kind of new too that you're going to find that there's going to be stuff that you don't know what, what it does. You know, you're going to just kind of mess around and figure out how to work it. Cause right now I'm just getting the same, I'm just getting the same old stuff right now. And I do not remember how to use nano mesh. Okay. 
Yeah, you can, I'm not. I'm not really getting anything with this. Let's not waste time with the nano mesh brush. Um, we got like 30 minutes left, so let's let's keep it moving here. We'll go back to nano mesh in the future chapter. I promise you, I will cover it after I kind of you know relearn it myself. I haven't used it in a while. Um, but yeah, there's a nano mesh brush. But basically, the nano mesh is kind of like you know, if you create something, you can just create it on like every vertex. So if you want like a certain like hair, if you want hair or something, you can just make one piece of hair and then just click on the vertex and, and make it on everything. It kind of works like that. Um, you can see there's a curve here, so you could tweak curves. And it'll change like it'll change the effect of the brush. So right now I have the move brush, right? You could see now though, like if I drag out like with the move brush. I'm getting like I'm getting this curve now. Um, let's go back to this one actually. Let's delete the old one. Okay. You see what's you see what's going on here? So curves curves are pretty important, and I feel like people don't really use curves a lot. But if you use curves with the move brush, I mean you can get some pretty cool effects pretty fast. Um, and a lot of people, they don't use that. I don't know why, but definitely uh, experiment with this, with the curve. The curve following the profile while it's using like the move brush, basically, when it's pulling out. So you can get some cool effects with that. And of course, you know, you can dig in. I could change this curve a little bit, maybe, uh, you know, I don't know. Just kind of experiment, really. Just mess around and uh, see what you come up with. There's, there's all sorts of stuff, you know. And then if you don't want the points on the curve, you just click and kind of just drag off. And now you're back to... Kind of back to the regular way the move brush works a little bit. I think other things are like active right now, so it's acting weird. Like the brush, if your brush starts acting weird, you could probably like reload the brush or like restart ZBrush if you kind of mess things up. If you didn't duplicate your brush and you kind of mess things up, you could just uh, you know, restart ZBrush. AccuCurve, we went over. I'll go over it again. Because it could be applicable for this area, you know. But basically, it just it gives you that point. Remember, it gives you like a point when you pull out with the move brush. So that's what the Accu curve does. And these are things I would set to a custom menu. And when we go over customization, I promise I will show you, you know, how do you create a custom menu? But also, how can you pull up a custom menu with a keyboard shortcut where the menu just pops up like right in front of you? Right with all your custom stuff in it, it's awesome. But we'll we'll go through that soon. So we'll take that off for now. You could load in curves too. Like if you save out a curve profile that really like you like and you want to use like later down the road, uh, I could save this out and just put it in a new project. Be like, man, I really like how I did the scales with the move brush. And, you know, in this project, let me let me load up a curve and do that again. Uh, you know, it could work. I mean, it depends what you're doing. If you have to make a lot of things and they're uniform and they have uniformity to them, then yeah, you know, I can see that. I can see that, you know, happening for that, you know. I could really see that happening for that. I really could. All right. Cool. So, yeah, we kind of went over these things. To do scales, I kind of just kind of go over that a little bit. It was like robotic before, now it's kind of scaly ish. It's pretty cool what you can do with this program. Now. It's pretty cool. Um, so that was AccuCurve. Wrap mode, I don't really mess with. We could turn it on just to see what it does. I don't know if it's going to show us. Oh, it's doing some craziness. Uh, wrap mode can give you something cool, it looks like.
Um, but just mess around, you know. Oh, you know what? I had wrap mode one, um, zero on that one. And if you hold control and you hover over these, it should tell you what it does. Values of wrap mode higher than one will be multiply copies of a stroke to be applied to a model at the same time. Wrap mode is normally best used with models that are symmetrical and simple in their rough form. A primary use is with planes to permit quick production of tileable alphas. Okay. From a plain mode, single, single brush uh, tile. So if you want to make like a tileable, um, the wrap mode is good. Basically it's saying the wrap mode is good. Like you want to make like a tileable brick wall or something. You could put wrap mode on and it'll, it'll, it'll help with that. Curve by pen pressure. So this will give you a curve based on how hard you're pressing with your pen. Um, yeah, I really don't know. Let's see if I hold hard and push. I hold soft and push. You know, I'm kind of seeing the same thing here. Some of these things, honestly, I don't mess with. This has a curve, too, for the pen pressure. These are kind of more like, you, you probably wouldn't even mess with them. You know, kind of things, but they're there if you want to play with that. Def. Now, def is something that I would recommend you mess with. It's awesome. I'm going to show you what def is. You're going to learn what I like to call the gravity brush. Um, so if I use the standard brush and I use my gravity strength, you can see that my gravity direction is pointed downwards. See, if I go like this, I can push it upward or downward. So generally, just put it down, push, point it downward, right? And then I can just go over with the standard brush. And I can make it look like I can give, this is good for like wrinkles, like on faces and stuff like that. Or like when things are drooping downwards or, or you know, um, like a woman's, uh, you know, like a woman's breast as well. If you use this brush on those areas. You could start making things, you know, kind of droop down a little. It gives it like a natural feel. Um, you can see that doesn't look good on this one. It's gonna, it'll do good on the upper lip. It'll kind of push it down. You know, it might even give us some cool. Kind of gives us some random effects too. Like now we have like a little bit of this going on. Like it's not so straight like the way it was before. Oh crap! Don't hold control and drag on the screen, um, because you'll you'll do dynamesh, which I just did. But yeah, that's besides the point. So let me see. Um, let's let's put this up a little higher so you can see what it's doing. You know what? This is on a Z ad, and I want it Z sub. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Oh, there you go. Now you can really see what it's doing. So we're on a Z sub. So now I can kind of build back up his lip here, which is cool, you know. That's cool. I like that. This remember, this is the gravity strength. Now I point the gravity strength upwards. I can I can kind of dig down. Yeah, you know, I think we want Z. I think we want Z add this time. Yeah, so this is you can get some cool effects. Um, let me show you like this, so you can see what's going on here. Let's do let's do a section over here. So right now it's going like upward, right? Oops. Now hold all. We're going downward, but we're also getting like that overlapsation of skin. You see that? So I'm holding all and I'm going downward. I'm holding all and I'm going downward. What this good for gills, like skin overlapsation, which I just mentioned. Um, a lot of cool. A lot of cool, good uses to that. I, I like this. I like the way that looks. Um, maybe I'll use it over here to kind of get this to look a little bit better. I don't know. Let's try that. 
I love this brush. I love what the gravity, man. You know, you just really can push things downwards. This is one of those brushes that a lot of new people don't use. So you're learning like, you're learning some advanced stuff right now. You are in advanced mode, even though it's a beginner course. Congratulations. I'm sorry if I'm not on the chat right now. Um, I'm I'm working on a laptop, so I don't even have two screens. And I really I don't even know if anybody is, you know, messaging me or anything like that. Um, I don't have much time left. We got about 15 minutes left. So let's let's move along. Uh, if you are watching, I, th I thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, these videos will be available on YouTube as well. So don't even worry about it. Matter of fact, part one's already available. I'll share that soon with you. So gravity brush, man. Ooh, gravity brush. So awesome. Tell me that brush is not awesome. You could save this out as your own brush too with the gravity effect. And then boom, you know, you don't have to like manually do it every time. Which is cool, you know. Trying to see if there's anything else that we can use on the gravity. I think really like, you know, with a lot of these brushes too, you don't want to overdo things. You know, that I think that's one of the biggest things is like, you don't want to overdo one effect. You want to be subtle. You might want to be subtle sometimes with certain things. Not so subtle with others. So depending on what you're doing. I don't know if I can get any more uses out of this brush. So I'm just, yeah, I like that. I like it. I think I'll make it a little bigger, though. I don't like that point, but because it kind of looks like he has a crown on. Let me try to see if I can get that back again. Yeah. That's cool with me. There you go. Move it out. Yeah, I have this effect on this move brush and it's it's not moving things properly. Um I'm gonna try move elastic. Move elastic is more like it's it's looser, you know, it's like it's really loose when it comes to moving stuff. You know, like you you gotta use it very slowly. Because it's really out of control. It's out of control. You know, I'm not really getting what I want because So I'm gonna That I like, but I think like the surface itself, it needs to come up more. And I might be able to get it with this brush. Whoops. I actually lost it with this brush, but go over it a little bit more. Eh. It's all right, let's just uh, leave it like this for now. And then we'll smooth this out a little bit. Because maybe this is too strong. I'll fix that area up a little later if we, you know, if we do take this. I mean, you know what we could probably do? We could probably poly paint because I'm going to teach you guys how to paint too. So this could be like the first thing that we paint afterwards. You know, who, who cares? Why not? Okay, so the brush in bed. Not the brush in bed, but the brush in bed, okay? You don't put brushes in your bed. But the brush in bed is just, it's its like the depth of the surface. So it shows like, if I bring it all the way down and I go ahead and go in on the surface, right? It's going to really dig into the surface. Well, it's supposed to. I don't know why it's not. I think it's too deep. 
Yeah, it was too deep. See that? Now, now it's working again. So, you know, you can get some cool effects. Now, the form brush doesn't, is not, that's not really what it does. A clay brush would be better to demonstrate this. So, I'm switching to the clay brush and um, I'll go ahead and bring this all the way down. I think if you bring it too far down, it just doesn't work properly. This doesn't work as good or something. See, I can't even see it at all. But, you know, really what it is, is it's just like the brush on the surface. Oh, you know what it is? When you, I think if you bring it up higher, I'm in reverse or something, but just mess around. But basically, if you see if I bring it up higher and then I'm sculpting, like it's really coming out on the surface. Even if I bring this down, like it's really coming out. If I bring my intensity down, it's really going in or coming out. So that's because of the embed that I, I have on it. And it that's, you know, how deep into the, how deep or how like loose it is into your model, I guess is the best way to describe that. Um, for lack of better vocabulary, you know, on the subject, but. Trying to see if these eyes are working, but I'll just leave it like that for now. So that's what the embed. That's what the def. This is the def of the brush, basically. So that's what that does. There's a def mask too, and if you you know you really want to get into things, you could really add like a curve, and all sorts of crazy stuff. You see, like right here, you have an inner def and an outer def. So that means it's going to go this much into the surface. It'll be this much out of the surface, and it'll use this curve, and oh man, it just gets crazy. It really does. It gets crazy up in here. So I encourage you to mess around with all these different things. All right, samples. I'm gonna be 100% honest with you. I don't really use samples this sample stuff in here too much. Um, surface sample radius, constant sample brushes. Like if you're creating brushes, you kind of would use these effects. Um, you can see though, if you hold control, it tells you the constant samples will keep the radius sample at a constant sample rate. It's, it's how it's like, it's sampling the brush on the surface. And then if a clay buildup is probably like this with the buildup on it. So this clay with, with buildup is basically like clay buildup. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, kind of like that. So you know, it's pretty much what that is. And if I take buildup off, though, you could see. See how it's not really doing all that craziness like it was before. So you can make your own brushes, you know, like when you clone a brush, you can mess with all these settings until you get like the brush you really want, you know, really, and then save that thing because you spend so much time making it. Um, that's what all this stuff really is. But spotlight projection is something that honestly I wish was off by default and we didn't learn spotlight yet, but basically when you have reference up and you're trying to sculpt in your model, it won't let you sculpt because spotlight projections on. If you hold control to tell you the spotlight projection is less than one, textures will be painted more faintly and less Z-def. We're going to learn all that, but I generally keep that off. I usually have that hotkey, too, in my menu because just in case, like, I need it on or off, but I always have it off. The elasticity of the brush. I mean, again, if you kind of just go in here and you mess with the settings, you'll you'll be able to kind of see, like, the kind of effect that it will have um, it's like it's one of those things you just got to mess around there's really no other way to s describe it to you um, it's really just a process of you know messing around and seeing what works seeing what works what it does
you know, sometimes I'll, I'll make a mark and I'll hold Alt and then I'll do this. And I'll try to see if that works. If it doesn't work, I'll just I'll get rid of it. Yeah. I love on being able to undo all this stuff. Um, so that's elasticity. And again, if you hold Control, it's going to tell you the elasticity will control the amount of strength that will be used to maintain the geometry of a mesh while it is being edited. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. All these items are in this on just this brush. I mean, we we covered alphas pretty fast. You can see there's not too much, but brush has a lot of stuff in it. And you know, I really just want to give you a rundown of everything, kind of go through everything, so you understand what ZBrush is capable of. Um, because I see a lot of people, you know, they'll they'll teach you ZBrush, but they won't really go through every single thing, um, what everything does, for the most part. Fiber mesh. We didn't learn fiber mesh yet, but a fiber mesh is like if you're doing hair and stuff. And why we'll teach you that. <laughs> um, you can you can choose the length of it and things like that of the hair. So these are kind of some you know advanced settings for that. Twist. If you want to give your brush that you're using, if you want to give it a twist, you could change the twist ration here. Um, I don't know. I don't even know if that's really going to work. Oh, maybe it's the radius. Yeah, I really don't even know like how the twist works. But when people, when when the brushes are being made, there's certain areas like in here, like everything's in here that you need to make a brush to make a custom brush. So you you can really just go in there and experiment. Um, but there there is a brush though that I didn't show you. I want to show you real quick. It's called the spiral brush, and the spiral brush is awesome. I probably say that with every, about every brush, but now the spiral brush is very awesome. And I mean, it basically twists it twists stuff, you know. So that would be pretty. And the twist that it does, I mean, that'd be pretty hard to kind of do. If you were just sculpting, it would be pretty, pretty tough to kind of to give that look if you were just sculpting it. So kudos to the. But this is another one of those brushes that you got to kind of use subtly. You know? Like maybe I'll just use it like a little bit right there and just twist that corner. Um, or maybe you know, maybe I'll just do it like that. You know, maybe. I mean, that looks really good, actually. Um kind of like that you know so maybe i'll use the twist brush just on that the nostrils alone you know you got to use these things sparingly though it's like you can't just use it everywhere i can't just you shouldn't be like oh let me twist here let me twist here <laughs> you know <laughs> let me twist here uh, i mean uh you know you got to use things in, in, a, in a way that makes sense these brushes they're just brushes but you you have the logic right it's your it's up to you to use your mind and your logic on where you should be using these brushes. Like they should not be being used in every scenario, you know. I, I don't want to see people going like, like, let's just do this and oh my god, it's you know, it's amazing, but nah, that doesn't work for me. You can overuse brushes. You could definitely overuse brushes. It's like if you were doing painting, would you just use black paint? Probably not. Would you just use white paint? No. It's not gonna look good. All right, so the, the twist, the twist is a twist. The orientation, right? So I think the orientation is the way that the brush is, like the way it's oriented, um, the direction of it. If I'm not mistaken, you could see now, like when I use the standard brush, I get that weird effect. Um, I have this other advanced thing called lazy mouse on. I did not teach you guys how to use lazy mouse. I'm gonna take, I'm gonna take that off for now, um, but. I'm getting some crazy weird effects here, and that's because of the orientation of my brush. So because of the orientation of my brush pointing with the spin center of negative five, um, you know, I'm getting like <laughs> some crazy stuff going on. And and I mean, you know, you can make some of these things work for you, you know. That's the beauty about this. It's just it's a happy accident program 
I, I like that. I actually kind of like that. I'll keep that. Um, but yeah, this is a happy accident program. Right? If there's a, if there was ever a program that gives you happy accidents, this is it. Hands down. All right. So and there's different angles. There's spin angles, all sorts of stuff. Surface, surface. There's uh, something called surface noise, and we didn't learn this yet. But noise is like if you want to add noise to your model, and I'll just do it real quick right here. You have a zoom. So if I want to add noise to this whole model, I could just go like that, right? And then I can click OK. And then it should add noise, but I don't think it did. Oh, it did add noise. It's it's weird. Now what it's doing is it's actually painting on noise or something. with Well, just that brush because that, I was using that brush when I was doing the noise thing. So maybe you want noise for it. You know, maybe he has like a... Uh, an eyebrow or something like that. I don't know. But let's not worry about that. I, I'm, I would say uh, you know, take the noise off, though. This surface noise is different from another surface noise. This is brush. All this stuff has to do with the brush that you're currently using, by the way, which I should have pointed out. All this stuff, okay? So this is brush noise. Then we have modifiers. Uh, a brush modifier, this really allows you to change the brush's behavior. Um, I mean, you know, you could really do some, you could see right now I'm already getting something, which is similar to like the gravity, when I showed you guys the gravity brush, you know, I'm getting some crazy effects. I don't even know what's going on. You got to, you could really go, you could really experiment with these brushes and really come up with something cool. Um, it, so this gives you a secondary effect to your brush, it, it's basically saying. So whatever that effect is. You know, I don't know what it is, but you could just mess around and figure it out. So this has a modifier 10. What if I do 56? I'm not really getting anything. Let's turn up the strength. Tilt. Now you can see here, now I'm getting something. I did like a tilt on this, which which is cool because it's kind of, maybe if you're like pinching a surface and pulling it down or something. Well, I probably probably like this, yeah. Um, and that's pretty cool. So yeah, all this just. It really modifies the brush, you know. It's really no other way to say it. Um, trails would just, it gives it more of a trail, like when you're, when you're drawing with the brush. Okay, so that's that. And we're going to be wrapping this up very shortly. Sculptures Pro is, is new. Um, to ZBrush 2018. But what it allows you to do is when you're in Sculptures Pro mode, it allows like the area that you're sculpting in, like it's going to it's going to keep detail, basically. So I take it off and then I sculpt. You probably won't even be able to see the change, but it only puts detail in the area that you're sculpting in. That's pretty much what this brush does. Um, and Sculptures Pro is, is new. Um, if you're pulling out horns and use Sculptures Pro, it's only going to add detail on those horns. So instead of using the Dynamesh that I showed you earlier to, to kind of even out your geometry, not have clean geometry, but even it out, you could use, sculpt, you could use the uh, Sculptures Pro. And, but again, I mean, that's, you know, that's up to you, like what you, what you want to use and stuff. But this is adding Sculptures Pro in the brush itself. Auto masking. Um, you can mask by polygroups. We didn't even learn polygroups yet, but you can set different groups. Right now, there's only one polygroup, which is that orange that you see there. Um, you know, but if I do like a Shift W, I think it's Shift W. Probably not. Control W. 
right? Nope. I don't remember how to do it. <laughs> but we'll do it we'll do it the other way for now. If if you group something, right? If you mass something first. And this is good for separation, like fingers and toes and areas that are hard to reach. You know, you might want to hide certain areas while you sculpt on other areas, so this could be good for that. So if we go under here in polygroups, we could choose uh there's a group there's a group visible, but we could choose group masks. And what it's going to do is going to make a mask of just this group here. Right? So now I have two polygroups. I have one here and one here. All right. And the way that works, if you hold control and shift and you click, you could just see one polygroup. If you hold control and shift and you click that polygroup, now you see the other one. Hold control and shift on the canvas, you bring them both back. All right, that's one way that that works. So when they're talking about polygroups in here in auto mask, masked by polygroups, that's what it's referring to. So you can see what it's doing right now. It's it's obeying that mask, and look, it's it's leaving like a line. You see that? Because that's where the two polygroups are. Oh, maybe it's not. <laughs> I don't know why it's doing that then. Um, why is it doing that? Is now it's doing it? Yeah, now it's doing it. Okay, okay, whatever. But yeah, if you you can see like if I sculpt over this, like I'm getting that poly. I can see that polygroup coming through now. Which is super weird, right? But yeah, this could be what you want, you know. You never know until you give it a go. Um, man, I really like the way this sculpt's coming out. Actually, it's kind of cool. Whoa! How did we get that? All right, we're back in solo mode. So that's masking. I mean, there's so many different masking effects. Fiber mesh has to do with adding hair. It's adding a mask on the hair and stuff with the fiber mesh brushes, which are hair brushes. Like there's groom and there's blow. There's like there's all sorts of. I'll show I'll show you guys in another video because we're kind of running out of time. So we're kind of you know running through this directional directional brush. Not even sure how this one works to be honest. You could change I guess the direction by pressure. There's a lot of there's a cavity mask. Um, cavity mask is the cavities, like the, the inner parts. And honestly, you know, you, you could see right here, like alone, like we can get some really nice effects with using that setting in the brush menu. And it's basically taking a cavity information. Like this is like the area where it gets dark, kind of. And. It's only like it's only sculpting on those areas. It's not sculpting on any of the other areas. Like it just wants to sculpt on those areas alone, basically. So And this could be cool, you know, this could get us some this could get us some I like this I like to call it uh could get us some free detail, you know. If you do it, you know, in the right areas, it could get you some free detail. It's kind of kind of weird, right? But I don't even know how to explain it. But the best way, a cavity mask is um, right now. It's doing like an auto cavity, but if you were to go to masking and then you do a cavity mask. By the way, there's like pretty much a menu for everything here. So if you go to masking, this has nothing to do with the brush, by the way. This is this is the tool menu I'm in, okay? But if you go to masking, um, this this will show by default these, these items. If you go to masking and you choose mask by cavity, right? And just click mask by cavity. And what it's going to do is it, um, it's going to auto kind of mask by cavity for you. And you could see certain areas are being affected, and certain areas are not being affected, right? So, we 
You should probably use a different brush. Um, let's try. Sorry, let's mask my cavity. But mass by cavity kind of just masks them in the nook and crannies. I'll have to demo it for you another time. But because I kind of like <laughs> kind of make ZBrush all out of whack messing with all these advanced settings here, which is fine because we can reset current brush or we can reset all brushes. Um, you know, so then there's no harm, no foul. There's back face mask, and when back face mask is on. If you're sculpting on something small like the surface, I'm gonna have to reset all brushes actually, guys. If you're sculpting on something like a really thin surface and you have your back face mask on, it won't go through the mesh. Like what it tries to does, it tries to project it on like the other side. Um, so if you like if you if you're sculpting something super thin, you want back back face mask on because if not, it's gonna to try to sculpt on this side too, and you won't you don't want that. You know, you only want to sculpt on the one side usually. So that would be like a common way. So you see, I reset my brushes. Everything's acting normal again. So back face mask, I'll show you. Um, I'll show you with back face and without back face, I think would be the best way. So right now, I'm going to turn back face mask off, right? And I'm just going to sculpt in this area. And let's do. <laughs> it's working as if I think back face mask is on. But basically, you see how the other side wasn't being affected. That's because the back face mask of it is on. But this back face mask has to do with, I believe this one has to do with the, uh, what do you call it? The, um, the brush itself. Um, but you want it, you want it on typically. Back face mask you want on. Color mask, topological, moving things topologically. It's like, you know, the way things are affected. Um, like topologically, there's a topological brush, for example, and I can move this without moving the other because, or it's going to try to at least. It it moves the topology, so it'll actually not even move that. This is polygroup. It'll move what you want. If you have multiple meshes in the same subtool. You can move the topology of each of those because they're going to have different topology. Topology is the overall overall geometry of a mesh. Um, it's good for things like teeth. If you want to move teeth separately and they're all in the same subtool, then topological is good for that. Tablet pressure. That's just the pressure of your Wacom tablet of your tablet or the tablet you're using. You you can have different pressure sensitivity for each brush, right here basically. You can use global settings. The global settings will take the settings that you set in your preferences and your tablet pressure. Or the, you can just make custom settings here to control how strong the brush is, what, how much color it gives, and all sorts of things like that. Uh, alpha and texture. Um, it's like if you want to make like a tolerable alpha and things like that. Um, and then there's painting for poly painting. Like how the brush acts when you're in poly paint mode, which is the painting mode. Um, but you know we won't really go into that. The clip, clip brush modifiers is if you want to have it work as a clip, a clip brush, right? Um, and I, I don't think I can demonstrate it with this brush per se. But basically, it's um, clip brushes allow you to clip surfaces delete search surfaces of a you know like I could just clip this I could clip this horn off for example 
with a clip brush, but I'm not using a clip brush. The smooth brush modifiers. Um, the most important thing in here, smooth brush modifiers have to do with just the smooth brush settings. So when you press shift, you, you know, and you're smoothing things out, there's different behaviors. And you can see when I hover over it, it says smooth mode is, by default, you're, you're using a smooth mode of zero, right? But, which is standard smooth. Then you have a strong smooth or stronger. There, a balance, a subdivision, through the stroke direction, a perpendicular. I mean, you have all these different smooths, and these smooths are different for different reasons. Like, if you want to keep detail, um, you know, you would use a certain smooth mode, basically. So, I mean, we can experiment um, how a smooth works. When you hold shift, you know, you get the smooth brush. I'm at the highest intensity. What I'll do is I'll just make this a little bigger. And we're probably not going to be able to see much change. I mean, if I go down, you can see if I smooth, like, you see what happens when you smooth. You can really obliterate your mess, right? Um, then I could probably change this. Let's see, maybe the two. I'm going to smooth stronger, too, right now. So, uh, different. What? Oh, actually, you know what? Now I'm on a one. If I'm on a one, I'm really going to obliterate it fast. Oops. I'm going to undo that. If I want a two. It's still kind of obliterating it fast. Um, three. Now this is kind of you know maintaining the shape a little better. Uh, four. So okay, I mean this kind of maintains the shape a little better too. Hold shift and then choose the weighted smooth mode, right? So it's five. Let's try five. I mean. You probably think like nothing's really changing. It all looks the same, but something is changing. It's changing the smooth, what happens underneath, like with the topology, you know, like with this one, it, it looks pretty smooth. Let's just do ten, eight. See what eight's doing? It, it looks weird. Eight's doing like, I don't know, like some fishy effect. I don't know. It's so weird. Um, typically, I use zero and one. One is like, one. I'll tell you what one's good for. One's good for if, let's say you don't have subdivision levels, right? And you're really high. And you're like, man, this is a mistake here. I can't smooth it out. You, know, you might want to switch to sh to the one, which is stronger. And then you can go ahead and you could smooth it out. You know what I mean? Well, with being high, being higher up, it, you could still smooth it. So weighted smooth mode is good. Is very good to have. Like I usually have it docked right here. Um, what I mean by that is, is we'll do enable, enable customize. And then I usually take that and I throw this, I hold control and alt by the way. And I put that right there because that, that is something that, you know, you're, you're going to use, like if you're trying to smooth an area, but keep your detail and things like that, then you're going to use that. You're going to use that a lot to be honest with you. Um, Okay. I'm just going to save this because we haven't saved in a while. Save your work often, often, often. Can't stretch it, stress it enough. Can't talk either, but can't stress it enough. I'm going to reset all brushes again. So we just went through all the br all the brushes. Um, so that's great. We went, we did go a little bit over. And... Uh, I mean, this is what we have so far. Also, here is a quick thing. If you press BPR, you can do a render, a quick render of your model and get some shadow information in there. So if I click BPR, I can kind of render my model and see, you know, how how things are looking with shadows, which is cool, which usually is good. Like, you know, you want to get like, see how the shadows are falling, how it's working. And, and some, you know, in, in two... It's good, to, you know. It's always good to switch, switch your material by clicking material and just you know, change it to different materials and see how it looks. You know, see if it's working. Materials. We're going to cover materials. And when I first started, like I didn't really understand materials, and I think it's like one of those things. Like I don't know, I was kind of stubborn about. Like I would use certain materials, but I didn't understand like. 
there's these things called render passes and things like that, which I'm going to teach you. But I really didn't understand, like, oh, why is there all these things here? Like, what are people doing with all this stuff? But in a nutshell, you can assign materials to different sculpts that you make, different objects you make when you sculpt, right? Um, and then you could render it out. And you combine it to make, like, a finished image. Um, so, yeah, so this is what we have so far, okay? Let me just, I'm going back to this one here. Um, when you're done, like, let's say, like, we're done in this menu, right? We can just click this to close it out. And it just, it, it'll go away. I think what I'll do is I'll just, I'll resave, I'll just store this configuration one more time. Because um, I reset my brushes. Color palette. Um, we can we can do color palette real quick because it's not really much to it. Um, gradient colors. I don't use this really. Gradient colors. The only thing I really use in here is fill object. So if I want to fill this object with a color, for example, we want to make him red. We could choose fill object. And right now there's an M, which is the material. So if I just want to fill the material which is the matte cap. If I want the matte cap gray on the dragon, then I hit M and I choose fill object. If I want the green on the dragon, right? Without the matte cap, I can hit RGB and I'll just get the color, but not the matte cap. If I want to bake both of that in there, MRGB will give me both. So if I want this and this, if I want the color and the material, I can go to MRGB, which is material and red, green, blue color and click fill object. And you can even see like it updates the subtool. Like if we look, if we hover over this, we can see it's green. Again, like if I want to make this tentacle, right, a different material. Let's say I want it to be reflective like that, right, and then I want it to be like a blue or like a purplish color, right. I can just I'm in the MRGB, so I'll just click fill object. You can see that now we have two different objects. If I show them both at the same time, you can see what the two objects look like at the same time. All right, so we're just working on one. I'll go back in solo mode because I'm just showing this one for now. Um, so this could be like a base color basically for a dragon um, or whatever it is. I don't know what it is yet. I think, well, it's pretty much looking like a dragon, but yeah. And right here you have like a bigger color selector here, which is equivalent. It's this, but, it, you know, it's up here. It's a little bigger. Um, this one allows you to select like the gray value or the lighter value. I can do red. It always goes back to just like default gray and black though. The gradient, um I honestly don't use the gradient color. I don't know. I think it allows you to put a gradient on the thing automatically. The gradient will create a gradient from the main color into the secondary color when poly paint. Oh, okay, yeah, that's right. So if you have two different colors, like I think like this, right? Like I have an orange, I have two colors here, right? I have, I have this color and this, and I'll put gradient on. Now I think if I do that and I do fill object, uh, you know what? That didn't even <laughs> that didn't even work. So I do not know what a gradient is. I don't use that to be honest. You can make like custom anyway, so it really doesn't matter. I'll show you. I'll show you how to do a custom. Oh, you can see that um, I didn't get this material on this because I'm in red, green, blue. If, if I was in MRGB, then I would get that material. But because I'm in RGB, I'm only getting the one thing. Uh, I think this is the main color. Yeah, this was the main one. So we'll do fill object. And maybe we'll do like a green. We'll leave it at that for now. So. Yeah, so really, that's really all I use in here um, is fill objects. Is probably the best thing to use in here. Um, and honestly, that brings me to another thing that I'm going to choose enable customize, and I'm just going to do control alt. And I'm going to take this fill object. I'm just going to throw it up here because I like to have these things fast to be able to to get too fast. You know, things I use a lot. It's it's good to have. It's always store config. I don't know. I always save UI. I don't know why. It's, save UI is like if you want to save it and then go to it later on. Store config just loads it up. So I guess 
you can do either one. But okay, that's pretty much the uh, the color thing in a nutshell. These, this is just like I don't know, man. I never even used this. This is just like a it's like a light show over here. So you could see though that you could fine tune things with different colors for the color enthusiast out there. You could really pinpoint the color that you really want. My color is important, don't get me wrong, but I just don't use that. I only use the one. I only use this really, to be honest with you. So cool. So we got through alpha brush color document. Um, let me probably do document real quick because it, it pertains to this. So if I go out, if I just save this tool, it's not going to save the big material and color information that I have in here. Like if I just save this like this, it's going to save this tool. It's not going to save the color information and stuff. But if I do a document, right, and I do a save as, it's going to say, do you want to save the document or just the tool, right? So we'll do save the document. And then we could save all the information, you know, in the document, basically. Um, also, if you go to, if you click this Lightbox documents, it just opens um, Lightbox into your document so you can see I have nothing in there because I don't save into that directory. Then you have an import. You can import an image uh, and you can export an image. You could do an export screen grab as well. I mean, importing an image is just, you know, I could probably, we could probably just grab this, I guess. <laughs> so, I, oh man, I just kind of did some weird stuff. But yeah, you can like import an image and it'll bring the image in, but it's not like it's there, but it's not static, if that makes sense. Like it's not it's not baked into the image it's not baked into the onto the mesh or anything. I'll show you how to do how to bake stuff on the mesh a little later, but then you can export you can export a screen grab, which is a pretty common thing to do. And then you just save your screen drive as a PSD or a JPEG. So, you know, you just, you take your screen grab, you place it the way you want. You can crop it out by using this. I mean, you could just do a print screen too if you wanted to, but the quality is going to be good in this. It's going to be better in this, to be honest. And you hit OK when you're done, and it'll just it'll grab it. It'll do a screen grab of that. It'll throw it on my desktop, and just to show you, um, well, I think it threw it on my desktop. I really don't even know. Yeah, it did right there. There's our ZBrush screen grab. So there's our screen grab that it just did. Um, save as startup doc. So if you want to save this current document every time you start ZBrush. You can make this your startup document. I'm not going to do that, but that's you'll you'll basically every time you lose ZBrush, you'll start with this. We're not going to do that though. You create a new document. You can zoom the document. You can do the actual size. Um, you can do anti alias. Anti alias is like I'll just click it. You see what happened? It made it kind of smaller. So. You can do half and double. If I do double and then I click yes and then I click control N and I draw this back out, you know, I get my model back. But basically it's it increases the document size, if that even makes sense. And you can see what the document size is right here. So if you need your document a certain let's say like you need to like display this on a high definition TV or something. 1920 by 1080 is the TV. Right now, this is 24, 2964 by 17 something. I mean, I could just do 1920 and do the height as 1080. Right? And then if I go ahead and I double that, uh, it's going to resize. It'll resize it at 1920 by 1080. And that's why, like when you save out your document, um, when you do like a render and stuff, and you save it out and you open in Photoshop, that controls like how big your file is. 
Well, I doubled actually in 1920 by 1080, so it made it 59.28. So it's good to work with more than you need. Store death history? Eh, I don't mess with that. Delete death history? Click here in order to execute a Z script? I don't really mess with that. Um, ZBrush can do like a lot of stuff. And um, one of the things like, it has like all these different plugins and stuff in it. And some of them are pretty cool, actually. And ZBrush is kind of like, it tries to be, you know, basically like the one go-to program. Like you can do everything in ZBrush. Um, when you kind of can, if you know what you're doing. So one of the programs that it has is something called Paint Stop. Right? And Paint Stop, I'm going to click Paint Stop just so you can see it. It's literally a painting program in ZBrush. Okay? <laughs> it's it's kind of like if you were open Photoshop and you start painting or something. But it, it's literally a painting program in ZBrush. And it's it's good because... You can kind of concept in ZBrush before, you, you know, if you don't know what you sculpt, you can paint it out first. And then uh, it's it seems to be taking a while. I haven't loaded this while. Oh, there we go. Now, I mean, we're messing with a whole different beast here. You know what I mean? Like, but, you know, what we can do now is we can literally choose different brushes. And this may or may not work. And if it doesn't, I apologize. But, uh, well, and paint stop too, actually, let's say we don't know if we want to give this guy horns, we can kind of like paint over it and be like, how would it look if we had horns like this? Yeah, it would kind of look cool, you know? So we can kind of like concept out things, you know, what, what would it look like if we gave our, our dragon glasses before we sculpted it on our dragon? Yeah, it could work. What if we looked like we had like, you know, some smoke coming out of his nose or what if it looked like we had some horns here or. Or maybe, you know, what does it look like we had some teeth here? So that's pretty much like, you know, what this does. Um, if we hit Control N, we can clear that. We can clear that away, too. And, you know, this is like, <laughs> I don't even know how to use this program. <laughs> because, well, I used to use it. I used to use it a lot. All right, if we do file new, let's just do a file new, okay? All right, there we go. And now we can choose how our canvas is. I mean, this is literally a painting program in ZBrush, which is it's pretty unreal. But you can see it's kind of like lagging, you know. But there we go. Yeah, there we go. Now we can paint. You know, so if we want, we can start building. Like, yeah, it's time to paint. I mean, we're painting now in 2D, and we're still in ZBrush. You know what I mean? Like, it's pretty, it's pretty crazy um, that you can even do. A lot of people don't even know you can do this. Um, <laughs> I just think it's funny, you know, that, that you can even do this. Um, but you can see you got different brushes here. And you got your airbrush. You know what I mean? You, you got, <laughs> you got all that fun stuff. You got, uh, got some pen. This pen's pretty nice, you know, it could give a nice effect. You know. Um, you got watercolor. Which I can't even use on top of this. Um, you can change your colors here, by the way. You can see how that blends in. <laughs> I mean, we literally have a painting program in ZBrush. And it just... I, f I mean, I figured this out earlier, like in my life. I don't even know how, because I used to, I used ZBrush so much. You know, it's kind of like one of those things. But it, it, but still, you know what I mean? It's just so crazy, just to think that we can paint inside ZBrush. Um, so if you're an artist, if you're a 3D artist out there, and you're like, I, I need Photoshop. Well, you, you technically don't. <laughs> You technically don't need it. You know, you technically could just use this program to get done everything you need to. Um, blend, blend just blends everything together. 
I mean, honestly, this is this is a cool pro. You know, this is pretty cool, man. Like, I dare say, like, this program is cooler than programs that are meant to be, uh, you know, a painting program. Some of them, I dare say. I dare say, sir. I don't. It's kind of wonky a little bit sometimes, but I mean, you get the gist of it. You control everything here. You have your draw size. You have your, you know, the size of your brush. Um, you have a zoom button. You have an actual size. You have a scroll. You have an exit button. You know, and, and what is this? I don't remember what this is. Oh, this is a sheet, like a sheet, of, like a sheet of paper, I think. So maybe you're working on character concept of the same thing i don't know you know maybe you're just trying to organize your different concepts or something you could switch into a new sheet and be like okay let's let's get the work you know <laughs> time to get the work on the next thing you know like in here we're gonna have um you know armor or something you know maybe we just have like a piece of armor in in this one so i mean i just wanted to show you guys that it's pretty cool I'll hit exit. You could do a paint stop projection. I'll, I'll show you what that is. I'll do pick up now. <laughs> it's going to, I think it's going to crash it. I don't think it can do what I was trying to do. It was, I was going to, you can project what you paint on top of your model, basically. But, it's it's not going to be able to do it. We usually do it in Photoshop with something called Zap Link, which is like literally underneath it. Um, it says pick up sequence complete, but it didn't it didn't do anything, right? But underneath it, uh, if we go back to document, right? Let me see something. Okay. There's something called Zap Link, and this will link to an external image editor. Um, and you have to set your target app. So my target app is going to be, you know, my target app is going to be Photoshop, basically. So I would basically have to find my Photoshop um, if I can do that. Which I don't, I don't know if I can do it. Let me see. Uh, what is it? Adobe, right? Where are you, Adobe? Um, give me seven seconds, maybe, or maybe more. If I go here, go to properties. Um, Photoshop is in. Photoshop's in my D drive under documents. All right, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in my Photoshop. All right, so if I choose Photoshop, right, which is my EXE file, and then I click open, it's gonna, it's gonna bring um, what I'm working on, right, in Photoshop. So if I want to paint. If I want to paint in Photoshop, I can paint with photos in Photoshop. And then I can save it back out and bring it back into ZBrush. And ZBrush will know what to do with it. Switch to an external editor. It looks like it's going to take a second because um, I just set it up. You know what I mean? So it's not. It's like, you know, first time, first run. It's on its first run right now. Oh, you know what? I think it's done. There it goes. I just have to click, I think. Let's choose... Drop Drop the current tool. Let's try drop now. I haven't done this in a while. So if I click drop now, error incurred while launching. I have to figure it out. But basically, you can make it work in Photoshop. But I think because Photoshop's already open, maybe it's not working. I have no clue. I'll try one more time. Error encountered while attempting to launch external editor. All right, I'll have to look into that.
but you can launch it in, in the Photoshop. It works on my other computer. And sorry, I will will definitely go through that though, because it's it's fun. And then right here you have different properties for your zap link. The zap link is just like to link into the different program to paint on to. So we're, we'll go through that. All right. Um. So all right, so that was document. We covered document. The next is draw. Draw, we kind of, there's some stuff already in draw, like draw size, like the size of your brush, the focal shift. We went over that. The intensity, like how strong is the effect of the brush. And then we have the material and the RGB. We have the RGB, we have the M for just the material. And we don't need this because we already have it here, so we don't need to worry about that. Um, Z add and Z sub is like if you're uh, uh, subtracting or adding to the surface with clay, whatever you're doing. And then right here we have like a representation. You know, right here we have kind of like a representation of our uh, of our model, which is the tool preview. And that controls the preview that I think that I think that controls the preview there. I say that that's here, but don't quote me on it. I mean, I'll do a test and see if it changes. It, it didn't change it. I have no clue. <laughs> I forget what it does. What does this do? I can't remember. I have to figure it out. The current tool preview shows you the shape of the of the and the color of the current tool. You can drag within the window to see how this tool looks in different orientations. Okay, so that's kind of useless because we can just drag here and see how the tool looks. Um, I mean, I guess it's like a quick way to see the tool, but whatever. Perspective is right here. We have perspective off right now. The angle of view is the lens, like the lens, the camera angle of the perspective. I have it. I have it off right now, so it's not being affected by this. See, I can bump this up to 161. Nothing changes. Uh, auto align camera to object. I use, I don't I don't mess with these things, but it could become useful. It looks like um, we'll keep the Z tools alignment facing camera when moved to any location. Okay. All right. I I think I know what that means. I think that I think like if you have perspective on and you do auto align the align to object you see how the the object is just i have perspective on but you see how like it doesn't change but if i don't align the camera you see how it changes to the sides so that that's pretty much what the align to object does auto adjust distance i don't mess with that but button will allow you to adjust perspective in order to avoid clipping all right, I don't mess with that. Don't mess with that. <laughs> Open grid. So you can load in your a custom grid file. And the grid is like, you know, what we have right here, this grid. Um, so if I hit open grid, I mean, I don't know if this will work, but let's just try it. Oh, you know what? It has to be a Z grid file. It's not going to work. Never mind. I don't have a Z grid file. So. You would either have to make a Z grid file or something or save one or but basically you can see I can control the elevation of the grid here. Um can turn the floor on and off. I can control the fill. So if you want to see the grid a little bit better, I don't I, I honestly don't use the grid when I, I don't I usually work like this to be honest. I like working like you know, there's nothing around. The grid is useful if you want to make sure like something is flat. Like if you want to make sure, like you know, maybe this piece is flat, then then this would this might be good to use or something, or or, or grid might be good just to kind of you know grid out your mesh if you're following reference and you're using a grid, you could use the same number grid on this. So I mean you know, and you can control how many tiles you have, you know. So how many tiles do you want? One billion. There you go. Now you got a billion tiles. Congratulations. Um. It's kind of cool. It's a little subtle. Snapshot to grid. 
pro the project uh, the projectile mesh slider controls the floor grid image projection opacity. So this is about loading like an image on your grid and stuff like that, um, which it's like if you're loading reference and stuff, but we're not doing that right now. Then you can see there's other stuff here like front, up, down, left, right. Um, I don't even think this is the one I use. Is it the other one I use? Because now I'm curious. I'm trying to think like if I was loading reference, what I is this what I use? Oh yeah, you can use this. You see what I just did there? I just turned my grid into an image. So this could be useful if I'm trying to sculpt a star or something. You know, I got the star right there, but you have to import it first into your texture map, right? Because right now you can see like I'm in my textures, which is right here. So if I import a texture, for example, if I was to import, let's say my logo, right? Let's learn 3D. And I go back here and I choose that. Uh, there we go. We got it in there. Now we can do flip, <laughs> inverse, um, rotate. Rotate, rotate. I don't know what I do. Oh, there we go. So now we got. Now I have my logo in there. Um. So this is for like the up and down, and then you have a front and back. So you can add another map for front and back. So what you can do with this is you can literally set up grid like a grid. Like if you're modeling a car and you have the different angles for the car, you could load in the front. You could load in the front and back in there. You could load in the up and down, which is this part there, which would be like, you know, the bottom of the car. This would be like the front of the car. Um, and you see there's map one and map two in there. Because one is for the one axis, like the Y axis, but then there's one for this axis. So it's for both. It's for different axes. Um, like, all right, if I load this in, right, you could see, like, if I go in this mode here, now I can see a back view, and now I can see the front view, which is Let's Learn 3D. If I, if I make the fill mode a little brighter here, you see that? So the, this is this is how you load in reference images that when you're working with a model, and it's it's pretty important. Um, if you're working off of reference, like you know somebody made it already and they already made all the different angles, like yeah, bring it in, you know, work off of it. Um, and you could see we have everything we need basically to just model something like. If we drew all the angles first, you know, we can keep it just like this. And then we can just, you know, go in there with our move brush uh, and, and really start working it. So, you know, and you see how it's like, it's see-through too, which is, which is awesome. So that's, that's pretty much what's in this. Um, this is in the draw. It's kind of weird, like, you know, that this would be in the draw. <laughs> like, this area would be, it's, they don't know where to throw it, I guess, but this is your image reference. I don't, I don't know what they call it in, like, 3ds Max or Maya. I think it's reference cards, or, I, I forget. I mean, I know how to do it in Max. Um, you have to set up planes, you have to set all this up manually, like, different 3D planes. And then you have to add a texture on top of it and make sure it's, I mean, this program, it, it already has everything lined up for you, which is beautiful. And then you can see if I click the floor, everything goes away, right? Which is awesome. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Um, that's the best I can really explain it. The frame opacity is like the frame of the mesh itself. You can see like, the highlight of the grid. Um, this is how, you know, this is like pure outline almost. Yeah. All right.
and that, that's everything for today. I'm going to call it a day here. Um, thank you for watching. And part three, we're going to do tomorrow. And we'll go over some more of those tools. Have a great night, guys. Thank you.